as you go higher, I find that your ability to advance is also based on people's ability to trust you. My name is Juliet and I'm, an, I'm the Chief Executive Officer for Jumia in Nigeria. Yes, we listed uh, the company in April on the New York Stock Exchange. Yeah. It was the first of something to be listed. Like it was the first African tech startup. Wow. Yeah, to be, to be listed. Yeah. So we hope that with that, it opens the, the opportunity for all the tech startups on the continent to also get visibility and you know to get uh, get listed at some point as well. You know, cash on delivery, we see it as, um, it's almost like something, you, like a signboard that tells people, if you're not yet comfortable, if you haven't tried a transaction online before, and you're trying it for the first time, if you're not yet comfortable, hey, by the way, you can pay on delivery, okay? So it gives some comfort, especially in an environment where people have had all kinds of experiences and they bring that to bear when they are trying to transact online. But we see also over time that that adoption of uh, payment is, is increasing. We also have our own payment solution. We call it Jumia Pay on, on Jumia. It's an, ag it's an agnostic solution. Basically what it does is integrate whatever payment method the customer is using, whether they're using mobile money or they're using... A, a card payment, whatever, is all integrated in the Jumia Pay account. It's a wallet system. Okay. So we've seen the adoption uh, over time. It's increasing. But uh, we, we also are realistic enough to, to understand that for a very long time, there will be people in this market who still prefer to pay uh, payment on delivery. Now, it's not necessary that it's always cash on delivery. It could be payment on delivery. It just means, delivery. exactly, so they could pay with the POS or whatever at that point on delivery, yes. Just to clarify, the trust quotient is actually someone's um, uh, trade or what a trademark or whatever, you know. So if you you can Google it and see it, but it's something I've found extremely useful and I've adapted it. So it's called a trust quotient, right? And um, basically, what it, it says is that, especially the higher you go, okay, uh, manager level, senior manager, to being a business owner, entrepreneur, and so on. We tend to focus so much on credibility, which is about our skills and, and uh, the functional uh, skills that you bring to the table. Uh, some of us look at reliability also, which is very important, which is he says what he's, uh, he would do what he says, which is very important. But the connection with people, and as you go higher, I find that your ability to advance is also based on people's ability to trust you. Okay. That trust relies on the other part of that equation, which is about vulnerability. And vulnerability is about being true to your weaknesses and being confident enough to understand the areas where you have gaps, you have weaknesses, and to confront them and to admit them. Okay. People, people want to associate with people who are comfortable with their weaknesses because they also feel that they can be comfortable with you. And the more people are comfortable with you, even in their weaknesses, the more they can trust you. Okay. So that's how that equation uh, uh, you know, is set up. It's credibility plus reliability over vulnerability that results in your, in your trust, trust quotient. But I raise it because it's extremely important for, for leaders. For leaders. Yeah. What's also important is this issue of decision. Typically, people talk about it from a, an investment perspective, but it, it happens in life as well, where we've, we've made certain decisions, right? And despite the fact that it's staring us in the face, that it's about time to cut this thing loose and move on, we, we, we are stuck in the emotion of the fact that I've invested so much time and so much energy and so much cost into it. But the reality is that as you confront every day, you have to reassess that decision or that investment is it, or that project. You have to reassess it. Is it worth it today, given the context of today, given the circumstances of today, given the options that I have? And you're always deploying your capital, you're deploying your time, you're deploying your emotions. These are all you know, variables that we're deploying at every point in time. So you have to constantly reassess and forget the past because you can't recover the cost, you can't recover the energy you spent already. 
all of those are non-recoverables. The only thing you can recover today is the decision you're about to make, whether to continue or not to continue. So it's just that it's wired in a, in a, a, you know, a limbic brain, like they say. So we make those fallacies of thought, and that's what we need to check ourselves on. I learned that from a book, uh, from a book written by Colin Powell, where he said that, um, look, especially when you have, you're making multiple decisions a day, you're a business leader, you're making so many decisions a day, you don't have enough time to, you know, uh, drill down to all the analysis paralysis on each one. If you have 70% of the information that is required, you have enough to make a call and move. If you have below 40%, you don't have enough. So your margin of where your plane is trying to move yourself from 40 to 70% so you can have enough. If you're waiting until you have 100%, you're wasting time, valuable time too, especially if you're in a business like ours where you're constantly making decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. So it allows you to make optimal decisions with speed, combined with speed as well. Because no one is giving you honors for making decisions. That you decided to uh, do something in one year, you're not going to get a medal for that, right? <laughs> when you should have made the decision in two days and moved on and made more decisions that are relevant. Yeah.